This is the world's largest beetle, and this is my finger. And in this video, I'll be putting to the test how strong these beetles really are. And I'll also be showing you the craziest centipede species, insane alien looking bugs, and so many other cool insects, starting with an assassin bug. Yup, assassin bugs. And if that sounds deadly, it's cause they kinda are, but they also are kinda cool. Let me show you why. So I let these assassin bugs loose into a little enclosure I built for them, and now you can get a clear look at them. What makes these creatures are so cool is if you look here, they have this super weird sharp mouthpiece. This is called a rostrum, and using it, they can pierce into their prey, inject a special kind of digestive enzyme venom into the prey, then using the rostrum, they slurp the insides of the prey up like a smoothie. <laughs> it's insane stuff. And as you can see, I have multiple of these guys because I got a special kind of species that are able to live and hunt together. You probably see why they're called assassin bugs now. So let's feed them a cricket and document their hunting. Now, I knew this wasn't going to last long because assassin bugs are some of the best hunters out there. And I was right because immediately this unlucky cricket happened to climb up the very piece of bark that all the assassin bugs were hiding under. And one of them was on the lookout and instantly spotted the cricket. Now it was time to hunt. Like real assassins who move super stealthily, assassin bugs do the same exact thing. And this guy extremely slowly inched towards his target. And as the gap slowly closed, the assassin awaited for the perfect opportunity opportunity to pounce onto the cricket, who was now in the grasp of the assassin bug. Right away, you can see the rostrum pierce into the cricket, and yeah, the inside of this cricket is now being turned into a juicy smoothie for this assassin bug to slurp up. Yep. Sounds yummy. All right, let me get this lid on. I don't want these guys biting me in my sleep or anything. Okay, the next insect species is one I've been holding off on getting for a while, but it's a centipede. Yep, I finally got one, even though they're all extremely venomous, but oh boy, let me show you this guy. Yeah, I didn't get a small one either. I got one of the largest species in the United States, a giant Texas red-headed centipede. And as you can tell, these guys are pretty evil because right away he started to try and climb the sides of the container to escape, which I definitely wouldn't want because, well, we all know the infamous Coyote Peterson who gets stung and bit by everything. Well, he got bit by a very similar centipede to this, and, uh, yeah, based off his reaction, you could probably tell it's something I want to try and avoid, probably. <laughs> Just cut the, cut the cameras, cut the cameras. But it's definitely worth the risk because I get to show you guys how insane of a pet they are. Let me get them in this enclosure. Now, these guys usually live in desert environments, so we're going to use a bit of sand for this enclosure, but also a solid mix of dirt and other natural stuff because it's actually what gives them the best conditions in their enclosure. Then we want to give this guy some nice natural stuff to hide under. And finally, a couple skulls in here to signify how deadly these guys are to other insects. <sighs> All right, let's get the centipede in the enclosure. And please, don't bite me too. That would be much appreciated. But, oh, he's just gonna go crawl out. Well, oh, it's actually pretty gentle. Go on. Yep, go crawl out. Go on. Yep, yep, just like that. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, anyways, this dude immediately got to walking around his enclosure, and what makes these guys so cool is obviously how many legs they have. They're called centipedes, because centa means 100, and they basically got, like, 100 legs. But not exactly 100, because I actually did count how many legs this guy had, and it was only 40. So, yeah, their name is a lie. It's not 100, but, I mean, it's still a lot. It's so cool to watch these guys walk around, but it's even cooler to watch them eat. So, you already know, I got a cricket. And let's not waste any time. Let's drop this thing in here. And oh, things immediately were interesting because I dropped the cricket directly next to the centipede's face. But thankfully for the cricket, the centipede was distracted. And so the cricket walked straight past his face and kind of just walked onto his body. And then he kind of just started to ride it like a train. Dang, bro. You got to be careful because uh, this train is, well, uh, it's definitely about to eat you, bro. I'm just going to be honest. And I was correct because only 30 seconds later, the centipede once again came across the cricket. And this time, the centipede definitely saw him. And so the centipede started to follow in the direction the cricket ran. And so I also followed the centipede with my camera. And that's when I saw the two met again. And this time the centipede made his attack. The cricket tried to escape through the logs. But as I looked around the corner, um, it's pretty clear the cricket wasn't able to escape. Because he was now in the grasp of this insane apex predator of the desert and was getting munched up. Good job, centipede. Even though you are a little bit creepy, it's actually super cool to watch you hunt. Okay, we're coming up on the world's largest beetle. And 
testing how strong they are. However, I still gotta show you the next crazy insect pet on the list, which is a giant millipede. Now, the reason I'm showing a millipede right after showing the centipede is because they're very similar in a lot of ways, but they're also very different in a lot of ways. Now, the first way they're different is, well, you know how centipedes have that absolutely bonkers bite like I was talking about that's just extremely painful? Well, millipedes are basically the exact opposite, and they're some of the most friendliest creatures of all time. And to demonstrate that, I'm gonna let this thing crawl on me. And oh my gosh, the sensation of like these 300 tiny little legs crawling on my hand is just so weird. I don't even know how to describe it. But if I had to, I would just say it's a very tickly, because as you can see, each one of the legs on the millipede is almost kind of sharp, which lets it get a really good grip with what it's standing on. But yeah, it's just such a weird feeling. I even let this guy crawl on this cool snake plush I had sitting around. And wait a second, this isn't any ordinary snake plushie. This is the brand new Terra Green snake plushie that just released today. This new Terra Green snake plushie is a massive 36 inches long, and it's awesome because it has the channel logo engraved all over it, and it's very derpy looking. And since you guys have been asking for plushies for a long time, I'm not only dropping this snake, I'm also releasing this super duper cute axolotl plushie with it. And of course, we got the logo engraved on this guy too, as the blush on the cheeks. It's so cool. And since the snake is so long, it's kind of fun to play around with. I just swing it around my dog and wrap it around him and stuff. So I'll remind you guys again at the end of the video, but they just dropped today. So yeah, I don't know when they're going to sell out. We only made a limited amount. So seriously, guys, thank you for supporting the merch. It means so much. But seriously, let's actually get back to the bugs. I got some insane insects still playing for this video. Check them out on the store though. Uh, yeah, let's go though. But you see, I didn't just get some lame millipede for this video. I balled out and got the most massivest millipede of all time called a giant African millipede, which yeah, isn't really a very creative name. They just kind of said it's giant where it's from and that it's a millipede. But yeah, I'm not going to complain. I guess it's easy to remember. Now, there's just one problem because the place I bought this from specifically said in the description, do not use cocoa fiber. Now, if you didn't know, cocoa fiber is basically like the holy grail of dirt for terrarium builders. It's just like a special kind of dirt that holds humidity very well, I guess. But yeah, it's like unheard of to not use this in a build. Like I, I've literally never made a build without this. Like what the heck, bro? So since cocoa fiber was all I had, I drove to the greatest store of all time behind Walmart, Petco, of course. And there I got the special kind of dirt that is not cocoa fiber. But I also got some of this mulch stuff, which is like wood chips and a bit of moss. But for the secret ingredient for the millipede tank, it's this thing, which I'll show you very soon. So when I got back home, I started mixing together all my new dirt materials. All these materials I chose are specifically designed to hold just as much moisture as the cocoa fiber, if not more, which as you can see, makes this super duper moisty. All right, it's perfect that it's now super wet because if it was too dry, the millipede would not survive very long. They dry out super easily. So yeah, I'll have to spray this thing a lot to make sure it's always nice and moist. But since we have to keep this so wet, mold might actually grow on the sides of the enclosure. That's where my secret ingredient comes in. I got springtails. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you probably don't think it's that cool, but bruh, I mean, I still think they're cool, okay? Be free, boys. Yeah, springtails are just these super tiny white bugs that will go around and clean up mold if it grows. So yeah, they're perfect. Finally, I just put in some tiny bits of cork bark around to decorate the place and add some cover. There we go. This is a fantastical millipede enclosure. Let's go ahead and get this guy inside. Be free, boy. I hope you like your new home. Spent a long time on it. Well, I only spent like 10 minutes on it, but yeah, hope you like it. Anyways, after he felt comfortable enough, he uncurled up from his ball and got to exploring around his enclosure. Now, um, there's not really much to talk about with these guys, unfortunately, because they kind of just walk around and don't do much else. The main thing that makes them cool and also similar to centipedes is the crazy amount of legs they have. And the average millipede has a way more legs than a centipede, as you can see. Very nice. Yeah, my guy just wandered around the enclosure for like 30 minutes, but eventually once he feels comfortable enough, he'll start to burrow under the floor like you could see in this footage. And he'll basically just chill there for like 90% of his life, just eating the dead organic matter or something. I, I don't really know, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Anyways, next up on the list, I actually got something very interesting I've never showed on the channel before. A vinegaroon. This is the closest thing to a mutant creature on earth I think there is. And it's extremely cool. I'll show you why. Yeah, you heard that right. A mutant creature. And the reason I say that is because I look at this thing. It straight up has the body and claws of a scorpion, a tail that looks like a rat tail, and these weird antenna things that lobsters have. 
yeah, this thing is a weird. But probably the weirdest thing about this creature is in its name because it's called a vinegaroon. And if you separate the words in there, there's vinegar and oon. Now, I don't know what the oon part of its name means, to be honest. But the reason it has a vinegar in its name is because of this creature has the ability when threatened to arch its back up and shoot a special acid type of vinegar out of it to spray all over the threat potentially blinding them so the vinegaroon can get away and yeah it's pretty crazy and i'll be showing you guys exactly what that looks like let's get him in his enclosure so we can show it off this one should work pretty well now the build is pretty simple for these guys and thankfully i can use cocoa fiber again phew but yeah i filled it about one third of the way up with dirt and then i scattered some pieces of wood and bark around this time i wanted to add some greenery so i tore up bits of this moss and spread that around i love this stuff because while it might look pretty dry right now all it needs is a nice little spray to come back to life. And yeah, this stuff will just grow super fast over time as long as I keep this enclosure nice and moist. Anyways, Mr. Vinegaroon, this is your new home. Hopefully you like it. Let me just gently release you. Go on, can you walk out? Ooh. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. And yeah, immediately after putting this dude inside, he ran straight up to the glass to get a nice little drink of water off the droplets sitting there. It's pretty cool to see him using his claws to shovel the drops of water into his mouth. So yeah, dang, I guess he was pretty thirsty. Oh yeah, bro, I almost forgot. Let me get a water dish in there. Dude, that guy was thirsty. He instantly went and tried to get some water. So I'm just gonna go put that one nice in the corner. So yeah, I filled that up with a bit of water. With creatures like vinegaroons, you wanna make sure their water dishes are very shallow because they're not super smart. If their water dish was too deep, they might fall in and drown. So yeah. But anyways, my guy was having a lot of fun exploring around his new enclosure. All right, now I want to check out if this guy's going to try and eat. Maybe he'll even shoot his acid. I don't know, but they are nocturnal. So yeah, I mean, he might not even eat at all. But you already know, I got a little cricket. Crickets love me, obviously. Let's drop this guy in. Bye-bye. I dropped a cricket directly next to the vinegaroon, so some action could theoretically happen right away. But if you've seen my other videos with nocturnal animals like scorpions, you'd probably know that they straight up just like to not eat during the day. Yeah, they'd rather let insects crawl right next to their mouth instead of eating them, apparently. But with this vinegaroon, it was a different story, because right after a minute of the cricket standing next to him, I noticed he actually started to strike towards the cricket to actually try and eat it. That means this vinegaroon was in hunting mode. And the next time the cricket came by, I noticed the vinegaroon use his little antenna to locate the location of the cricket, and then he walked over to strike it again. But unfortunately, he also missed once again. However, a bit later, I noticed that the vinegaroon had found the little water dish I put in there for him. He then proceeded to walk into the water to take a little bath, and I guess he was getting a bit more of a drink too, but the cricket was directly next to him still. And when the two creatures got a little bit closer, the vinegaroon once again struck and missed, but this time he was not going to give up and chased the cricket down to finally get a hold of it all while splashing around in the water but dang bro now had an absolutely delicious juicy cricket in his grass and yeah he just started devouring it good catch bro i was not expecting that during the day now unfortunately he didn't use his acid a vinegar spray thing and that's because i think they only use that for defense and obviously i don't want to stress this guy out so i'm not going to force him to do it but i will show you guys this very cool footage of them doing it watch this so basically like i was saying earlier, they arched their abdomen up, aim their tail up too, and boom, the vinegar sprays out right there. It's pretty cool to see it spray out, and it also has absolutely insane aim. Like here, the vinegaroon was able to spot on, hit the tweezers that was holding it. So basically, any sort of predator in the wild will know not to mess with this thing if it gets sprayed. It's a genius ability from the vinegaroon. But yeah, I put a lid on this enclosure, and boom, this is a pet vinegaroon. Now it's time for the real reason we're here, to test how strong beetles really are. And of course, I have the largest beetle species in the world. But I also have this one with insanely sharp mandibles. And this one that's pretty tiny, but it also has mandibles as well. Now, I'll be starting with the smallest beetle and testing the weakest objects in this guy's mouth. But as the beetles get bigger, the objects will get bigger too. Until at the end, I'm going to be putting my finger in this guy's mouth. <sighs> Thankfully, though, I get to start with this little guy. <laughs> it's a lot nicer. This is called a rainbow stag beetle. And while it's the smallest beetle I have, it's still pretty insane looking because if you look very closely, it actually is a shiny purple color. There's not that many animals that have a purple color like this. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And I already built this guy a little enclosure, so I put him inside. Even though this place is pretty small, that's exactly how they like it because they kind of just chill around all day and don't really move much. Now, the first object I'm going to test with this guy is a little pack of jelly. Technically, this won't test their strength, but I just want to show you how they eat because 
is actually pretty interesting. Now, beetles like this are cool because while they got their mandibles here, this is actually not their mouth. Their mouth is actually under the mandibles right here. So yeah, that's where they eat. The reason they have mandibles is so in the wild, the males can fight each other and whoever wins the fight gets to go home with the female beetle. It's pretty interesting. But anyways, I went and put the jelly right in front of this guy. And these guys love sweet stuff like jelly or fruit. And in fact, I think this jelly is banana flavored, which is one of the beetle's favorite foods. So I thought this dude was just going to start devouring it up right away. But in fact, he seemed kind of defensive and actually started attacking it with his mandibles. But after I really kind of started to shove it in his face, I think he got a little taste of it. And then he seemed very happy because he actually started to then eat it. And it's actually very cool to see how their mouth works. Yeah, he really just sucked all the juiciness out of this thing. So let's close this for now. And let's actually go and get out our second beetle, which is this guy. And he has way bigger mandibles. This is called a giraffe stag beetle. So yeah, this is also a stag beetle like the one before, but a slightly different version with these way larger mandibles that if you actually look at them are also way sharper. And yeah, they should be able to easily crush stuff way stronger than the previous beetle. And of course, I already got this dude's enclosure built, so I put him in as well. All right, now for the object for this guy to crush, I've got a little piece of cardboard. Oh, also, I'm gonna take the beetle out of the enclosure for this experiment. Let's go. So I didn't waste any time and I just went and put this piece of cardboard in this dude's mandibles. And he sort of started to close his mandibles on it, but I'm not gonna lie, it was a kind of lackluster effort. I even tried putting it in at different angles to see if he could actually crush it, but yeah, he wasn't really doing a good job. So I decided to give him an easier object to crush, a paper towel. Surely he could at least make a hole through this with his insanely sharp mandibles. But yet again, even after putting it right at the super sharp part, uh, yeah, he didn't really make much of an impact, to be honest. Bruh, nah, these beetles got the most intimidating mandibles. Oh, he just almost bit me. But bruh, you can't even bite through cardboard or even a paper towel, bro. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. What are these mandibles for? You can't even bite through this stuff. No, I'm just kidding though. These are actually insane creatures. They're super cool. Let me get this guy back in his enclosure. Anyways, what I'm really excited about is testing this bad boy's bite. Well, I mean, I'm not actually that excited. I, I do got to put my finger in here, but... <sighs> Let's just do this. Yep, it's finally time for the craziest and also largest beetle in the world. A Hercules beetle. You guys have no idea how hard it was for me to get my hands on one of these. They were out of stock everywhere and I had to message so many people, but I finally did. It was super expensive, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, these guys live in the South American rainforests and unlike other beetles in this video, they literally have fur on them. Yeah, that's how you know they're exotic. But that's not even mentioning they have these absolutely bonkers mandibles because of what the mandibles are basically like a double the size of the body and i got a pretty solid sized enclosure for this guy but i'll once again be doing this test outside the tank since they're so massive now before i put my finger in the mandibles i first got something very close to a finger to find out the real damage i was about to face yeah i got a carrot because you know whenever i see videos of people like testing their fingers and stuff like car door windows or something they always use a carrot first as like a good representation of what it's like before a finger or imagine you just chops clean through this carrot and then i'm gonna have to put my finger in right after that jeez anyways i went and put the carrot in the mandibles without wasting any time and guys um to be honest i was kind of expecting this to rip through the carrot because they just look vicious but after moving the carrot over tons of different parts of the mandibles the most the beetle did was give a very light pinch to the carrot and yeah all it took was a bit of wiggling to get the carrot out bruh wait a second i'm i'm not even scared to do this anymore yo that thing barely affected this carrot. I'm just gonna put my finger in right now. Hercules beetle, you don't even scare me. Let's do this. So without wasting time, I just put my finger in. Found the perfect position to get pinched in the best way, and then the beetle started to close his horn mandibles down a bit. But I'm gonna be completely honest, this basically felt like nothing. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit of a pinch, but it is not bad at all. Now you might be thinking, bruh, Terrigan, what was that? This thing is so weak, and well, I actually kind of knew it was gonna be that weak. I'm not gonna lie. You see, the reason I got all these insects I wanted to make this video was to actually show you guys something. And it was to show you all that many of these insects like this beetle might look scary. They're actually such cool and fascinating creatures that we have to show our respect to. And yeah, I mean, some of them are definitely deadly and you do kind of want to stay away from them like the centipede. But still, they're so cool. And yeah, hopefully I showed you that with this video. And remember guys, check out the new Terra Green plushies that just dropped. It's the only reason these videos are possible to make because you guys support the channel and I really think they turned out so cool. Seriously. Seriously, bro, this guy's so cute, and this guy is so derpy. And I love the channel logo, how it's all over both of them. And a 
if you want to check out another video, you can click the video on the screen. Yep. Yep. And bye.